This is, on top of every other abuse I've told you about, this is also how you rig an election. This is election interference 101. Try to jail the guy running against your guy. First up is the ongoing crisis and attack on uh, former President Trump, who is officially a candidate for the President of the United States, the chief opponent of President Biden, who by all accounts is likely to seek re-election. And uh, the New York District Attorney, New York City's District Attorney, Alvin Bragg, has evidently decided, based on all reports, to uh, try to prosecute and jail Donald Trump related to payments he allegedly made through Michael Cohen to this woman, Stormy Daniels, uh, as part of a settlement agreement to uh, ensure that uh, she would not talk about any alleged activities or, a, or I guess a sexual relationship potentially that she may have had with President Trump. Now, of course, Trump denies he had any such relationship uh, and um, his defenders have suggested that this money uh, was part, and I think it's a fair analysis, was extortion. So what does Bragg do? He looks at information and evidence given to him that shows extortion and uh, rather than protect the victim, he targets the victim with potential jail and prosecution. Now, the big news was that he wasn't arrested this week, he wasn't arraigned this week, he wasn't indicted this week, which suggests, uh, however slightly, that maybe Bragg, who is a left-wing extremist, uh, is thinking better of uh, abusing his office to target Trump. Now, uh, this is one of three attacks on Trump from three Democrat political prosecutions across the country. You have the New York prosecution uh, with Bragg and company. You have a prosecution in left-leaning jurisdiction of Fulton County, Georgia, where uh, the leftist DA down there is trying to jail T Trump on, uh, it seems to me, targeting. You know, it's not clear whether he'll be indicted there, uh, but certainly there's a significant threat of indictment over Trump's efforts to get the government down there to do its job to make sure the elections were free and fair and clean. And of course, you have the other Democratic jurisdiction of Washington, D.C., in this case run by the leftists in the Biden administration, Joe Biden obviously being the president. His Justice Department is trying to jail Trump and others uh, based, again, on First Amendment protected activity related to disputing the election and uh, this uh, absurd um, analysis or application of the law related to presidential records that seeks to jail Trump on a dispute related to presidential records. A dispute that is ongoing with Biden, Vice President Pence, and arguably, in theory, every president and vice president who served in the office. So you have three different leftist jurisdictions run by Democratic politicians all trying to jail Trump or harassing him with abusive prosecutorial grand jury, you know, either prosecutorial abuse, grand jury investigations and such. And uh, we're supposed to pretend that's normal. That's just the rule of law and it has nothing to do with the rule of law. It's a weaponization and politicization of our law enforcement processes. It's something that if, if it's allowed to continue and fester, uh, will significantly undermine the rule of law undermine confidence in the fair administration of justice, undermine our Republican form of government, and by Republican form of government, I mean Republican with a small r, and uh, make a mockery of the United States across the world. Can you imagine what Putin and the dictator Xi in China are thinking when they see Biden and his political allies trying to jail on pretextual uh, basis uh, his chief political opponent? They must think, well, who are these people to tell us what to do? And it just makes a mockery and it undermines America's standing throughout the world. And I know the United States isn't perfect. I know there have been political prosecutions in the past, but no president has been uh, subject to this type of politicized, abusive targeting like President Trump. And on top of that, um, evidently we're not allowed to protest because the left believes that if the right protests, it's illegal and it's, it's violent almost necessarily, but the left can do whatever it wants. They can protest, they can commit riots, they can burn buildings down, they can beat up the police. No, that's not an issue. They can try to kill Trump in the White House. 
That's not an issue. But if, God help us if there's anyone who protests these abusive prose, uh, prosecutions. So, you know, not only do the Democrats want to make Trump a political prisoner, uh, but they want to censor and abuse and suppress civil rights of all of his supporters, of all supporters of the rule of law. So in the end, it's, it's not about Trump. Of course, it is about Trump in the sense that he's a big target uh, and seen as a threat to the establishment for various reasons. But it's also about whether our system of government is going to have rules that people can rely on uh, in a way that reassure them that the law is to be respected, that we have the rule of law as opposed, of, as opposed to the rule by men. Because right now we have rule by men when it comes to the prosecutorial abuses of Trump, uh, the malicious prosecutions targeting Trump, and other innocent Americans. And uh, it, it's, it, it's really serious. And um, I hope you've been following me on my Twitter feed. Uh, I hope you saw my uh, C-SPAN interview. Um, as a matter of fact, let's take a break now. I wanna, I wanna show you a clip or two from C-SPAN. You have uh, uh, Democratic politicians, an elected politician in New York, a left-leaning jurisdiction, uh, seemingly target the president on pretextual, uh, unprecedented legal grounds um, to try to jail him. Uh, he's a putative challenger to President Biden. He's the likely, uh, he's the likely uh, primary challenge. You know, he'll probably win on the primary. The idea that you would have uh, this, uh, as I said, uh, pretextual, novel, uh, as the Washington New York Times called it, risky legal theory to try to jail Biden's chief opponent. Uh, it, it's so disturbing. President Trump's civil rights are being violated here. Uh, Trump is a federal candidate, the leading candidate uh, for the Republican Party, and you have a local Democratic politician trying to jail him on protectual grounds. And I think Congress has an interest in making sure uh, that um, our, our a major presidential candidate and a former president isn't turned into a political prisoner. I think President Trump's a crime victim here. I think this is a corrupt district attorney investigation. It's, it's politicized. And, um, you know, if I were the governor of New York, I'd be trying to rein it in any way I could under law. Uh, you know, the president uh, should be denouncing this directly. And on top of that, um, all elected politicians in Washington, D.C., here in Congress, uh, they, they should be um, expressing some urgent denunciations of this. So as you can see that, uh, you know, Judicial Watch is standing strong for the rule of law. And I can tell you the left doesn't like it. The left uh, has no problem jailing its political enemies. Uh, they are a threat. Uh, this behavior is a threat uh, to the foundations of our country and our constitutional government. And on top of that, we... Um, have a president who is actually compromised by corruption. And I, I said it last week and it bears repeating, this president and his family has been implicated in a money laundering scheme involving millions of dollars in the Chinese communist government. And so what are we talking about? We're talking about the law being bent in an unprecedented fashion to target Trump instead. Now let me explain how it is you distinguish or how one might distinguish what is a legit prosecution, because Trump isn't above the law, no one's above the law, but also no one's beneath the protection of the law, don't you think? And in the case of Trump, one way to test whether these investigations and prosecutions are legit or not is to figure out, A, is this a law that is regularly applied uh, uh, across the population without regard to party or, statu or, or stature within, within um, you know, within the community? Uh, or is it a law that's never been applied before uh, but for Trump? And you'll see it's the latter. In New York, you had a, um, again, to take a step back here, we need to take a step back. This began with the Mueller investigation. They started harassing Trump by targeting his lawyer, Michael Cohen, up in New York. Cohen was forced to uh, uh, plead guilty to several charges. And the leftists running the Southern District of New York, which is the U.S. Attorney's Office in New York, even under Barr, they were, you know, they were virtually um, unsupervised. 
and they forced Cohen to admit to a campaign finance violation related to these payments to Stormy Daniels. And I noted at the time, and many noted at the time, this, this isn't a campaign finance violation, it's absurd. So the thinking of Bragg is that, oh, well, you know, first of all, the records were disguised, the business records were disguised, so that's potentially a crime. And it's even a worse crime, a felony, if they were disguised related to a campaign finance violation. What that violation is, it's not clear. A federal violation, a state violation, who knows? Because they're making it up as they go along. And you know, the irony is, what they're saying, to think of the inverse of this, they're saying that because he didn't spend campaign money on, on this settlement, agree settlement agreement with Stormy Daniels, he committed a crime. Now, you can bet if he spent campaign money on this settlement agreement with Stormy Daniels, he'd be accused of committing a crime by using campaign funds to take care of a personal problem, as opposed to what he's being accused of now, using personal funds to advance a, a campaign uh, um, operation. Now, if you're having trouble following it, it's because it's all a hoax. It's all bunk. They're making it up as they go along. This case has been before that U.S. attorney, excuse me, the district attorney's office, prior to that, the federal government, since 2018. And they decide, five years later, practically speaking, that there's a crime? Who are they kidding? What's happened since then? Trump announced his election, um, his, his uh, effort to get reelected or elected again a few weeks ago. And if now, I don't know what's going to happen in New York. Are they going to back off because people are upset and even Democrats are recognizing uh, that this is a, a, a obvious abuse? I don't know what's going to happen. But this is what I think ought to happen. I think that Bragg needs to be investigated. I think the Justice Department needs to be investigated because if you believe this is happening without the... Um, uh, uh, help of the Biden Justice Department, then I have a bridge in Brooklyn, I can tell you. And I think Congress is right to investigate. Um, you know, the loser Republican uh, and establishment class gets very nervous, right? Because they don't want anyone to help Trump. You know, they don't like every time Trump is in the news, even though he's in the news because he's being abused in unprecedented fashion in a way that undermines our ver the very foundations of our constitutional system. I'm, I'm just tired of folks running away from the corruption targeting Trump because they don't like Trump. Boy, that is a test, right? Do you protect people you don't like when they're being abused politically? That's a test many Republicans are failing. I mean, we understand why Democrats don't care. But don't be, uh, you know, don't be naive that Republicans, uh, some key Republicans are more than happy to see this abuse continue. And they don't like it when I object or when Jim Jordan objects and or uh, Kevin McCarthy objects. I got to commend Kevin McCarthy because he's the uh, he's been out there uh, standing against this. Vivek Ramaswamy, one of the Republican candidates for president running against Trump, uh, strongly denounced this. Other uh, candidates or putative candidates have denounced it as well, not as strongly as Vivek. Uh, but in my view, every political office holder in the country should be denouncing this, Republican and Democrat. And I want you to take note of those who are supporting this, because I think what's going on is un-American. Un-American. Trying to jail your political opponents. Not because they committed a crime, but because they're doing something you don't like politically. In this case, running against their buddy Joe Biden. And I want you to take note of those who support the effort to make uh, President Trump a political prisoner, because they would make you a political prisoner as well if they could get away with it. So the Judicial Watch, obviously, is already investigating um, this issue. We have the FOIAs out there. We will sue if, as I expect, we get the runaround. Uh, but this is a crisis, and I think you should call every member of Congress uh, you should call the leadership uh, offices, both Democrat and Republican, in the House and the Senate. You should call your senators. You should call your members of Congress and ask them what they are going to do to try to protect the rule of law 
from the abuses from uh, the Democratic Party who wants to jail Trump and make him a political prisoner in New York, in D.C., and in Fulton County, Georgia. And, you know, and I've been spending a lot of time talking about how absurd the investigation and how abusive it is up in New York. It's as abusive here in Washington, D.C. It's as abusive in Fulton County, Georgia. So don't let the media tell you, oh, there's much more serious stuff in D.C. and in Georgia. No, it's all abusive. It's all political. It's all unprecedented. It's all pretextual. It's all designed to make him a political prisoner in a way that could upend our system of government. And we're not going to stop talking about it. We're going to keep on pushing back on behalf of the rule of law, on behalf of the millions of Americans who want the law administered fairly. So encourage your elected officials to uh, do the right thing. Call the governor of New York. I don't have her number in front of me. Maybe we'll pop it up on the screen. I know I tweeted it out. You can go to my Twitter feed and find it. Because the governor of New York should shut this down. I mean, she's a Democrat, but the expectations that people follow the law should be demanded of all pol political officials, even if you don't think they'll do it. You should demand it. Share your views. And protest if you want. I don't know if they're local protests or, you know, local rallies on behalf of the rule of law, but don't be... Don't be shy about exercising your First Amendment rights to peaceably protest. The left doesn't want you to do it. They want you to be afraid. You have a right to petition your government, which I told you about. You have a right to protest. You have a right to freedom of association. And the left wants to destroy all of that in one fell swoop by jailing Trump. So these are dire times for our republic. You know, and everyone says, is it going to help him or hurt him politically? As if that's the most important thing in the world. It's not. And I'm not one who thinks it's going to help him politically. Heck, you know, it might help him in the primary. It looks he's doing pretty well in the primary. He's likely to be the nominee. I mean, but what, what candidate for president wants an indictment as he's running in a general election? I mean, if that were the case, you'd have every politician in America uh, lined up at the courthouses asking for indictments if they thought it would help them in campaigns. That's obviously not happening. So this is, on top of every other abuse I've told you about, this is also how you rig an election. This is election interference 101. Try to jail the guy running against your guy. And of course, you know, the, the philosophy here, the ideology, is this radical extremism, as I keep on talking about, this rising communism that unfortunately has infected the Democratic Party, that has kind of frozen the Republican Party in many respects, and it's leading to, uh, uh, it's led to a cadre of prosecutors being elected, yes, with the help of George Soros, who supports this 100%, where you have these prosecutors who go in and try to break the system. They're trying to break the system. Let criminals out in the street, cause chaos, jail their, their political opponents. That's what's going on with Bragg. And I pray the Lord gives him wisdom and discernment and he walks back from the brink. But we're gonna do what we can do uh, and continue to do, because we have many lawsuits on these issues and investigations already, whether it be in Fulton County, in, um, up here in Washington, D.C., on the uh, uh, attacking of Trump for uh, uh, daring to dispute the Biden election and daring to assert his constitutional rights as a president to have uh, his own records and make choices related to that. And, of course, we've already launched FOIAs, as I told you, uh, on the Bragg attack on uh, Trump's civil liberties. Uh, so uh, Judicial Watch is uh, on the march trying to get this information, trying to expose it, and hopefully by exposing it, um, allowing, allowing the public to fully understand what's happening in a way that um, maybe causes the bad guys to think twice about what they're doing. So I'll keep you updated. Uh, go to our Twitter feed at judicialwatch.org. 
you know, look to the media, uh, go to Facebook, we're all over, uh, you know, True Social, uh, Rumble, of course, YouTube. Uh, so we'll keep you updated everywhere we can. And of course, our website at judicialwatch.org, judicialwatch.org. Uh, someone has to stand for the rule of law. And I tell you, we're, we're gonna do it any way we can with your support. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.